So you might be thinking of opening a Shopify store and you might be perhaps thinking, I'm not the best designer here, do I need to hire an agency? So guys, before you ever do that, before you hire an agency or go about setting up your own store, you might want to listen to these five biggest Shopify design mistakes that are completely bleeding you dry and killing your conversions. There's so many entrepreneurs that we've met that have really drained their wallets dry, spending so much money up front on building their store or making it beautiful, but it results in no sales, which brings, brings us to an email that we got yesterday from Katie. Do you have it there, Sylvia? You... Yes, I've got it here. So guys, Katie sent us an email yesterday and hi, Katie. And Katie, if you're listening to this, then thank you so much for sending this email because I think this is going to help everybody else in yes. here. So Katie told us that she spent close to 25 grand and her words and no uptick. Ouch. Ouch. Ouch, 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 ouch. So first of all, don't hire agencies. We don't even have this as one of the five mistakes, but don't hire any agencies for any big amounts of money if you're just starting out. Because guys, just to give you, just to give you um, a guidance, businesses that are doing about a million a year, they would, if they were to migrate or set up a new Shopify store, they would pay an agency max about five grand. But yeah. these are already businesses that are generating revenue. And let's say and 10, have a brand. five or 10, right? But this is for a business that's making money already, yes. right? We're yes. not talking about spending this kind of money if you're starting out. Yes. No, no need to do that. No need to do that. So that's not even a mistake. That's just a no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, so, but so, let's go to the actual five yeah, so mistakes. Five, five Shopify design mistakes and, bleeding you dry. And we will go th from the smallest one to, to the, the biggest, biggest one of them all so that start. Kristen is super passionate about. <laughs> <laughs> so but, stay till the end. <laughs> stay till the end, you might be surprised. So let's go five, four, three, two, one. Number five, um, design mistake bleeding you dry, expensive theme customization. So this is yes. similar to what we just talked about, but it's a little bit different because rather than just paying someone to like build your store and paying them a lot of money, this is where you go and say, well, the custom, sorry, the standard theme from Shopify or a standard theme off the shelf. Yes. That doesn't do it for me. I'm special. I need to pay someone to really customize it or pay for an expensive yeah. theme that's going to cost a lot of money. But yeah. it's really not necessary. It's not necessary. And we've seen this so many times that uh, entrepreneurs go to Upwork and they're like, oh, I'm getting a, a coded developer from India and I'm getting really great value because he's only charging me 30 bucks an hour. But with those 30 bucks, he just like, he like hard codes something into the theme that yeah. ends up being useless. So what I need you guys to understand is that Shopify is spending millions and millions and millions of dollars to really perfect the themes that they're having. So one of the most common themes is Dawn. There is nothing wrong with Dawn. <laughs> Get the free version and just run with it. Yeah, there's a few, have a look in the theme store. There's a few major ones that like, you should yeah. be spending, in my opinion, more than a hundred bucks on the theme. That's it. Yes. Maybe 200. That's it. I, like... I personally would go with Dawn for free. <laughs> yeah. So the free ones are great, but if some of the some of the um, paid ones do have more features and more benefits. Yeah. So that's I would fine. go with Dawn for if free. You want, to start with <laughs> if you want to go fancy, go for one of the paid ones. Look at the reviews. Look yes. how many people have installed it, and uh, go for a popular one. And 200 bucks maximum. That's maximum. it. That's but it. Avoid any uh, theme customization. Yeah, you want to keep it in the box because the thing is, these themes update all the time, and you yes. want to keep it so that. And once it's cust once it's customized with hard codes, you can't, you can't other... update anymore. Yes, yeah. we've worked with the clients, and they hired all of these developers, and only because somebody told them that they need to do all of these special things that you know. Yeah. the theme couldn't do and at the end they had to scrape it all out. Yeah. Find the theme that fits you best and stick with it and keep it standard. That's that's it. So number that's five. That's it. Number five. Cool. Moving number on. four. Number four. The home page is not a sales page. Yes. What does this mean, Sylvia? <laughs> this means that if you open a store and you think that people will be coming to your home page and that having all of your products plastered on the home page, it's going to help you get more conversions. Mm -hmm. Pa -pow. Yeah. What's going to happen is you're going to get people coming to your homepage and being like, what the F, is, F this? is this? And they're going to bounce. Let me bounce. You're okay. See a super high bounce rate. Bounce rates when people come and they leave straight away. It's like walking into the shop and, and walking like, immediately. Hello, out. goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what is this? No, nah, I'm out. No, nah, I'm out. So, yeah. guys, your homepage is there for a reason. Your homepage is there for you to convey what your brand is about, what your business is about. And what you don't want to do is like, hey, we are a group of blah, 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 blah. We are the best soap makers in the country. No, like that needs to be boutique, 
small business, you need to be singing small business loud and proud because that may, gives your brand a personality. Yeah. So what you don't want to have on your homepage is some stock images with like the pretty faces, which is like obviously a stock image with no personality. Yeah. You really want to have your brand story, why you started your business in the first place, what are you all about? I think for the homepage, less is more. So there'll be yes. a section like what the brand is, what it stands for, yes. like a hero image. Yeah. Maybe like shop the collection or shop the range or like a, like a, it's kind of like a magazine, right? Like you see in the beginning of the magazine, like you don't see all of the products at the beginning, right? That's going to be yeah. later on. So you're going to like entice people, get them excited, get them interested, yes. get them curious. About your business. So yeah. that they click and go through. And it's okay to have a link there to collections, but like, yeah. you know, best sellers and suddenly having like, like a- 10 products or 20 products. Or, 20 products yeah. and having like a pet ball together yeah. with a dress for, you know, for going out or with whatever. Like, gadget, then some like laser, thing no. and then some uh, just random just random junk shit. yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay. don't do that so don't do that the other mistake on the home page not being the sales page people put their whole life story there as well I think you mentioned yeah. that right like we're gonna keep it short and sweet it's a preview it's like a trailer to a movie right like you have a short movie goes for two hours the trailer goes for two minutes right yeah so only put information there that's gonna help you make the entice, sale and add yeah. value to the customer okay I think that's enough on that one it's enough number mistake three number three not having collection pages. This is a big mistake for a few reasons. Yes. I think number one is that people don't realize that for a store to be successful, especially as a small business, you need to have a curated collection, meaning that yeah. you need to have products that are kind of like associated with each other that are related to each other, have some kind of connection to each other. Exactly. Further to the point we just said in the last mistake where it's all of these random yes. products. But the main reason for that is because you are making it easier for your customer to make a choice. Yes. So I'll give you an example. If you are, let's say, selling kind of paper products, right? What do you call these stationary products? Like Kiki K, Journal, like Kiki K journals, journals right? calendars, books. Yeah. So if you go to uh, a page and then there is journals and notepads and all of kind of different stationary and pens and all of that is together, it's going to be very difficult for the customer to make a, make a choice. It's too many choices. And then it's just going to be like, you know, overwhelm and bounce. Yep. Um, so instead what you want to do, you want to have all of the all of the notepads in one. You want to have all of the calendars in one. You want to have all of the, you know, different pens in one. You want to have all of the accessories in one collection because that way they are just shopping for that range and brain psychologically is getting the feeling that I'm having choices here. Yes, but, but it's not overwhelming. But it's not overwhelming and you are not making them choose between something that they cannot make a choice about, right? Because if I give you a calendar or what do you call this? A General, diary. diary. If I yeah. give you a diary and a notepad and a pen, I'm suddenly making a choice between three different products, which means if I cannot decide, I'm going to bounce, right? Yeah. But if I'm just making a choice between, you know, this pattern and another pattern, then it's narrowing down my brain and making my brain realize that I have already made choice on the journal. I'm just making a choice on the Which pattern. One? Yeah. So this is very, very important when it comes to your conversion rate um, to have those collection pages where you funnel essentially customer to already kind of you giving the, the blocks on the eyes and it's like, oh, okay. You've already made the decision that you are purchasing the product. Now we're just taking it to the next, next step. We are not already going back whether you want this product or not because you've made the choice. Now you're just locking in what color you want. Yes. Now the other reason why yeah. collection pages are really important and I'm sure you were going to talk about I that. Was, yeah. Da -da -da. I was, yeah. I wanted to keep it short and sweet though. Doing it Sorry too guys, detail. talk too much. Apparently, statistics, it's like a uh, while a man says one word, a woman says hundred. So yes. sorry about that. This is really, really true in this relationship. Is you can okay, talk. yes. So let's move forward. So the hidden benefit of the collection page, which might not be obvious, is search engine optimization. You can get a lot of traffic coming to your store. Search engines love collection pages because they're rich of all of the things that Sylvia just talked about. They're rich because they've got all of the different options there. So for a search engine, if someone's searching for diaries and you have a collection page with 10 different diaries on there or five different diaries, it's really relevant. 
And, and so Google loves relevancy. Yes. And Google will push that collection page yes. more and will reward you with tweet, 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 traffic. organic traffic. So when you look in your um, Google search results, when you search for something, you'll see it's common to see collection pages, especially if it's a product related search. If you're going to type in 2024 diaries, 2025 diaries, you'll see a lot of collection pages in the search results there. I think, I haven't pre-researched this, but I expect that they, that is they absolutely should be the there. Case. And the mistake for in that part of it is that not to have too much text. You just want to have a powerful heading, yes, powerful heading that's related to what the products are, and then a few sentences of text, like a little blurb. You know, shop our collection of diaries. These are the best yes. diaries for blah blah blah, and then go straight to the images. You want to have image, 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 yes. image. That's by the way. That's the power. I just tapped in twenty twenty four diaries first uh, after all of the ads. First collection boom. 2024 Diaries Collection bestsellers, boom. Yeah, amazing. Amazing, Perfect. all right. So not having a collection page is a mistake and then um, you wanna have one and you wanna get the, the benefits of, of the, the SEO, free traffic, free traffic and the well. conversion. Yeah, amazing. Alrighty, also when you're gonna run ads, you're gonna run them either to your collection page, collection page or, or product, product page. page. Not the home page. So this not is back to like page. the home page, not the sales page, remember? We're gonna drive people to the collection page or the product page. Exactly. Yes. Okay. All right. Number two. Mistake number two, bleeding your wallet, bleeding you dry. Not having an upsell app. Okay, not having an upsell app. So, uh, once again, I've had this conversation a couple of months ago with uh, Juanita. And Juanita sells products that are priced like five bucks each. Ouch. And she wasn't having any upsells, she wasn't having any bundles. And so people would literally go to her page and buy something for five, five bucks. bucks. Yeah. That's you don't want that. This is a problem. We talk about this in more depth in this other video. I put the link here. You want to check out that video to understand why your average order value needs to be $50 or more. If you're selling things yes. for five, ten dollars you're not going to make any money. Yes. Check out this other video on that. And it's bleeding you dry. It's not going to make sense when you're scaling running paid ads. It's just not going to make sense. You definitely want to aim at a very bare minimum 50 bucks. Ideally guys, 100 bucks. Ideally guys, 100 bucks average order value. So not having installed an, uh, an upsell app, app is completely ble bleeding you dry. There are all different kinds of uh, apps out there. There are some favorites. Yeah, uh, one of my favorites got... is the one-click upsell. I think it's run by Zipify. Uh -huh. uh, Ezra Firestone, I think, is the creator. I particularly like that app and we've seen yes. a lot of success with that one. But there are others as well. We're not affiliated with it. There's no connection there. It's just I've seen it has produced yes. good results. Yeah. Exactly. Any other apps you want to recommend? Um, there's a few if you go in the Shopify app store and type in upsell. I, I can't, type in upsell, I can't yeah. think of more off the top of my head right now on the spot, but the, I know that the one click upsell is good. I know some people in our community have been using it, they've been getting like 20% up, uptake. Um, someone adds the thing to their cart and then it pops up, hey, do you want to get this thing as well? Add, yes, 20% uptake. So that's some nice. And that's what it ideally should be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, if... I mean, getting that easily with no, with hardly any effort. Like, yes. that's, that's good. And at the same time, if your average order value is still not coming to 50 or 100 bucks, then you might have to look at how can you restructure your product so that you are selling, you know, instead of one t shirt, you're selling a minimum of three together, yeah. creating bundles or even increasing prices, which is yeah. many people don't want to do that. But Mara, one of our members inside the community, she increased her prices recently. And guys, she's been getting organic orders of over a thousand euros. She sells some of her products in euros, over a thousand euros in one order. That's yeah. pretty amazing. Yeah. Amazing. At the same time, with this mistake, yes. uh, do not make the mistake of installing all of the apps. Because yeah. if you install all of the apps, your store will just look junk. Yeah. And it will just go or tacky. Like it, it will pop, be very tacky. A pop up, the scrolling thing. Pop, pop, pop. Yeah, pop, pop, too pop. many things happening at once. And one yeah. pop up for email, and then another pop up over that, and another pop up for upsell, and another pop up for this or that. Yeah. Um, and it's going to look tacky. It looks so. tacky. Also, Google doesn't like all of Google search, don't like all of these tacky pop up things. It's distracting experience. And it's going to slow down your page. Yeah. So okay. keep an eye on that. So. But number two. one. Number one. Mistake number one. Design Shopify mistake number one. Bleeding you dry and completely killing your conversions. And I see is, this mistake all the time. And, and it's it, the mistake that Kristen <laughs> is absolutely, absolutely, absolutely passionate about. I'm going to introduce it. You're going to talk about it. <laughs> it's a mistake of mixing different niches in one inside your Shopify store. Let's go. Where do we even begin? But I think 
It sounds, it's not really a design mistake, is it? Because it's more to do with the collection that you choose, the, the types of products that you have on the page. But when you see a home page that has 5,000 products and they're all different products, like random product, random product, random product with ugly photos, it's all over the place, there's no collection, there's no curation, there's no design, and the photos just and look- there's no congruency. No congruency. And frankly, it just looks, I can't, I can't think of another word to say, but it looks shit, right? <laughs> so, like this, it's so ugly. And like no one, even if you had traffic coming to the store, no one's gonna buy it because it just yeah. looks ugly, doesn't look trustworthy, there's no design to it. Like, In just... other words, this is something we could also describe as general store. Yeah. And this could be very polarizing because we've seen there's so many gurus out there who just teach you how to do general stores. Guys, general stores are discount stores, that's not what we stand for. We stand we for creating ninjas, yeah. curated boutique brands where you can charge a premium because as a, as a business owner, for you to make this work, you want to be selling quality products. You want to be selling them at premium prices. You want to be very niche to selling it to one specific type of customer that you can then scale over and over and over and that customer is going to buy everything you've got. And it doesn't mean that you can then not open another store, but just think about now, not just the experience the customer is having, but also the algorithm needs to learn who that ideal customer is. And if you're just going to be selling microphones with cups, with computers, with diaries at once, it's just going to look and feel shit and it's just going to be crap results. Yeah, so the design affects the conversion rate. We've seen that, like an ugly design yeah. has lower conversion rates. So the products need to be curated. I mean, just think of the bigger brands out there. Like, I understand we're all running small businesses here, so it's unfair to compare to like Apple, right? But for example, but Apple, if you go to their website, what do you see? It's very clean. There's not a lot of stuff. The, the photos are all like styled in yes. a similar way. Like I'm you not, don't go to. It's not like a one dollar store where they yeah. have all the junk that's all the junk over. everywhere that's spread everywhere. So there's a reason for it, right? So yeah. that's why. That's just one example that comes to mind. Obviously, Apple's a big company. We're not. Yes. We're not trying to be Apple because we're small businesses. No, but, but there's a design. How many times so have I heard? How many times have I heard? Oh, who's your ideal customer? Mums. Okay, what does it mean? Oh, I'm selling everything that mum needs. And mom needs clothing, mom needs kids products, mom also has a pet, so she needs pet product. She also likes cosmetics, so she is buying cosmetics products. Guys, not in one place. And she likes, uh, she has a sore back from carrying all the shopping, so yes. she needs a massager. Yeah, yeah, so this is the biggest mistake. Bleeding your dry, mixing all of these different niches is one. Remember, you want to go narrow, boutique, you want to really drill down of what is the problem that you're solving and who is the customer that you are serving. This is absolutely the biggest mistake yes, out of them all. That's it. So in this video, we exposed five Shopify design mistakes bleeding you dry. If you want to learn about five other mistakes bleeding your business dry, then check out this next video and we'll see you there. But guys, before you go, just one last thing. Have you noticed that giant pimple on Christmas for it? <laughs> Thanks, Sylvia. Yes, but anyway, we tried to cover it up. We're not so good with makeup. So if you're still watching, let us know. Did you notice and was it distracting or not? Bye-bye. <laughs>